morning, Grace. Happy Sunday. We're excited to be hanging out with you this morning for our church service. My name is Amelia Page. I'm your communications director. And uh, I'm Zach Potter. I'm the associate pastor here at Grace. And today we have new volunteers serving as online chat hosts today. So go ahead, if you're watching right now and you're in the chat, go ahead and say hi to them. Let us know how your morning's going, how your week has been. And um, actually, what are your summer plans? Scratch yeah. everything. Just tell us what your summer plans are. What exciting things do you have coming up this summer? I don't know. Do you have any summer plans? I want to go to the beach. I don't know when. That is on the plans. It's though. on the plans. Yeah. yeah. I want to go to the beach. I want to see the ocean. My summer I plans, I want to play a lot of golf this summer. So I would love to just like take that hobby and run with it. Okay. Do we have any golfers watching this? Can you like comment if you're, you could just, you don't have to be good at golf. Do you, do you like playing golf? Caleb is probably trolling you in the comments right now. Caleb always makes jokes about how he's yeah. a bad golfer. Yeah. Caleb, I've never played golf though. You've never played golf? Mm -mm. We should play. That would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If it's like how I am at Top Golf, <laughs> we can just skip that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but if you are a student or a parent of a student, make sure that you are following along on Instagram at our student page. That handle should be on the screen somewhere, but um, they have some summer hangouts planned that should be starting in a few weeks. So make sure that you're tuned in there. Pastor Caleb has been posting all of the youth um, updates there and you don't wanna miss the summer hangouts. They're gonna be really fun. They've got some cookouts planned, some drive-in nights planned. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. Youth, is, uh, youth is awesome. I think it'd be great if you guys drop some comments uh, of encouragement for Pastor Caleb yeah. and his wife, Jasmine. I mean, that. The youth group has been awesome. phenomenal, especially during quarantine. He is, Pastor Caleb has been very, just so present with our teens. And um, yeah, I think he's been doing such a great job. So yeah. give him some encouragement. His golf game is terrible, but he's a great <laughs> youth pastor. <laughs> that's all that matters. Yeah, that's all that matters. <laughs> and for our GFC kids, we have um, the service. If you're watching on Facebook, our kids experience will play right after that. If you're watching on YouTube, our app or our website, all of our kids' content is already there for you to enjoy today. Parents, it's awesome. You don't want to miss it. I just heard the kids' lesson. It's, it's a good one. Bomb. It's Fire. One. Incredible. Yeah, and... Um, we have, we've also have, um, I don't know if you guys watched this past week, but we have Facebook Lives yes. that we're doing at 9, uh, 9 p.m. at night. And so on Tuesday, Pastor Joel uh, hopped on and... Had a little fun. He schooled us in some trivia. In some trivia, yes. <laughs> Pastor Joel, how did we didn't realize that he was like the trivia master. I just wanted him to come on and tell some jokes. Yeah. But... Pastor Joel, I just I think <laughs> I think some people have a disservice in regards to Pastor Joel because he's one of the funniest people mm -hmm. I know. But sometimes he can be a little like serious when he's like doing his thing, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, I think Pastor Joel's just, he's got a great personality, he's super funny. So I'm glad he got on there and mm -hmm. gave some trivia, but he would, he'd be funny if he just did like, if we just did jokes with Joel. Just go ahead and request that in the comments. Yes, so let's have a jokes him, with Joel. let him know we want jokes with Joel. And then on Thursday this past week, uh, Pastor Jamie and his wife Jody uh, mm -hmm. hopped on live and they answered some questions about parenting and that was super helpful. Mm -hmm. And so we were just so thankful for Pastor Jamie and Jody hopping on, sharing some wisdom and uh, just having a good time. This coming week in our Facebook Lives uh, at nine on Tuesday, yours truly and my wife, Ashley, we're gonna hop on, um, that's this Tuesday, and we're gonna, I'm gonna give a little devotional and we, she's actually gonna sing um, a few songs and we're just gonna have a little time of worship. And so I hope you'll hop on this Tuesday at nine. Yeah. And then this Thursday at nine, Pastor Caleb is gonna go live and there's no telling mm -hmm. what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna leave it like if that. If it's anything like his youth Instagram Lives, yeah, it's gonna be wild. You just never know. You're gonna to wanna to hop on <laughs> and just see what what's going on. Yeah, down. so that is nine o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're hanging out live with you on our Facebook page. So yep. definitely be there. It's been a lot of fun this past week already. Absolutely. And today we're continuing in our Ephesians series, yes. Overcomer, which has been so good. There is just like so much in the book of mm -hmm. Ephesians. And I hope that you've been enjoying studying that in your personal time and as a church together on Sundays. Yep. We have the Overcomer study guide that you can get at gracelives.com slash overcomer. The link to that should be available wherever you're watching. Yeah. And let me encourage you guys too. What we're we take the sermon from the from Sunday mm -hmm. and we break it down into uh, a short little video in a QA format. And that is what our life group 
life groups are doing during yeah. this time is we're actually diving deeper and discussing what is preached on Sunday. And so let me encourage you, um, if you're not in a life group, this is a perfect time uh, to get connected in a life group. Some of our groups are beginning to meet back in person. Yeah. Some are still meeting over Zoom, whatever you're comfortable with, but uh, you could text yeah. LG. Um, there'll be a number that comes up on the screen right here, but yeah. you could text LG and uh, I'd love to just personally reach out to you and connect you into life group. I, I was telling Amelia before we started recording this, but if I'm not mistaken, I need to get this, uh, this actual fact down, but I believe I have connected somebody, at least one person into a life group every week yeah. during this quarantine and time. And some weeks, multiple people. Yeah, and some weeks, yeah. multiple people. This last week, it was three. So, um, so awesome. I just encourage you, you know, if you're not in a life group, text LG to that number and then um, I'll get you connected and you can discuss what is preached on Sunday. So whatever yeah. Pastor Roy preaches today, you'll be able to talk that out with mm -hmm. other people. So it's a great way to learn. Yeah, we were talking in my life group um, just past week, just about how you learn so much more when you're sitting in a group and talking yep. about it. It's Absolutely. you realize what you're hearing and can apply it to your life so much easier when you're in that group discussion format. And it's sure. just, it's awesome. Yes. So if you're not in a life group, get in one. If you are in a life group, go ahead and comment that how you feel that we know you you're going to say group. you love your life group because yes. everybody loves their life group. Tag your life group leader or if you are a life group leader, tag somebody in your group and yeah. just be like, I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we gave some more exciting news this week. Yes. We are going to be back Father's Day at yes. 11 a.m. for one service. We're going to be back Praise at hands. Lebray. Praise right. hands. Praise hands. <laughs> we'll be back at 11 o'clock, one service, Father's Day. And go ahead and tell us about the kind yeah. of the precautions going on. So as you hopefully saw Pastor Roy's video that he put out, mm -hmm. um, he explained a lot of this, but if not, uh, so basically Father's Day weekend, we're gonna have one service, like Millie said, mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock. And uh, we want to give you the right to choose um, if you wanna come and also mm -hmm. how you want to come. So yeah. as a church, we're not, going, we're not saying, here's the regulations, here's the things that we're putting in place. We're just gonna have church the way we always have church. That, yeah. You know, we, that's that's how we do it at Grace Fellowship Church. And so we're gonna have kids service. Uh, we're not gonna put requirements in regards to social distancing or wearing masks or gloves or anything like that. Um, but if you would feel comfortable to wear a mask and you would feel comfortable to, you know, in a nice way say, you know, I'm gonna keep six feet apart yeah. and all that stuff, feel free to come wear your mask and, and socially distance yourself if you wanna be there. Um, if you wanna come and drop your kids off in, in, in kids world and GFC kids and uh, come into a service and just be yourself. Come on, yeah. you know, come, come be yourself. The and, main thing is just to respect everybody, yeah, do absolutely. what you feel comfortable with. And if you are more comfortable staying home and watching online, you are just as much a part of our church service that day as yep. if you were there. Absolutely. Yeah. We're committed um, as a church to stay online mm -hmm. um, in our church service and our kids mm -hmm. environments. And so, I'm, I'm just so looking forward to yeah. June 21st. I think that's going to be a special day, yeah. um, a big day. We're all going to be in person together, whoever can be, but um, I can't wait. I think it's going to be a party. It's going to be yeah. a celebration. We're excited and we're also excited about today's service. It's going to be a good one. Pastor Zach's going to see you in just a few minutes yep. back in the service and it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Happy Sunday. Yep. Bye guys. Enjoy the service. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name. Jesus, every war he wages, he will win. No, I'm not backing down from any giant, cause I know how this
Hey everyone, welcome to our online Sunday worship experience here today. And let me encourage you to like this service as you're watching it. Also, let me encourage you to comment while you watch it. Uh, if something's a blessing to you, whether that's in the music or uh, during the message, please comment and let's create community while we're watching this service uh, together. Also, let me encourage you to share this with your friends and family. Let's get as many people as possible watching this service with you. And uh, I'm believing today, our staff is believing today, the leadership of our church is believing that somebody's gonna give their life to Jesus Christ today. And so share this video. Let's, uh, let's get as many people as possible engaging the service and tuning in as well. Uh, let me just put this announcement before you. Uh, I'm sure you've seen Pastor Roy's video about the update of when we're going to have in-person church services again. Uh, but in case you haven't, we are going to uh, invite everyone to come out on Father's Day weekend. So that's June 21st. We're gonna have one service at 11 a.m. Uh, and it's gonna be out at LaBray High School. And so let me encourage you, come on out. Let's really have a great time of worship uh, together. We've been obviously quarantined for a while here. Uh, I'm just looking forward to being with our church family in person. And uh, like Pastor Roy said, we are going to give you uh, the right to choose if you wanna come and how you want to come. Um, so we're not gonna put any regulations on it. We're gonna have a kid's experience. Uh, we're not gonna require you to wear masks, gloves, or socially distance or anything like that. But if you want to do that, feel free to do that. You can come in a mask. You can uh, come what makes you, uh, what makes you feel comfortable. Um, if you wanna have your kids in the service, we'll have something that we're gonna provide for them to sit with you. And so anyway, uh, June 21st, Father's Day weekend, we're gonna have a live in-person service at 11 o'clock. And let me encourage you to come out. And I'm so excited for, for that service. And in, in, while we're getting back into live services, uh, I just want you to know we are still going to be providing online services and we're still going to be providing online kids services. So if you aren't comfortable to come out yet, uh, let me encourage you, you can still stay home and you can still engage with us like you are uh, right now. Uh, let me also encourage you, if you are a guest with us today, we are so thankful that you are here and that you are engaging this church service with us. Uh, would you mind to text Grace Guest to the number that's on the screen? That's Grace Guest to the number that's on the screen. And uh, we'd love to connect with you this week and follow up with you and uh, just learn how we can best pray for you and how we can best serve you. Also to our church family, uh, stay faithful in your giving. You have been incredible with your generosity during this time. And uh, it's really been just a challenge in my own heart, in my own life, to see how faithful you've been, not just to the general fund, 
but also to missions and also to our 325 uh, capital campaign. So let me encourage you, stay faithful in your giving. Uh, you'll see on the screen the four different ways to give. Uh, let me encourage you, stay faithful, continue to be generous. Let's be a model church to other churches about how we stay generous uh, in difficult times. Um, well, I wanna pray for us today as we're gonna go into a time of worship. And so would you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for today and the opportunity uh, to be uh, engaging a church service this way. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to continue to worship you uh, with each other. Even though we're not in person together, we can be in person um, here through technology. And God, I thank you so much for that. God, I pray for this time of worship. Let it be a blessing to our heart, our soul, and our mind. Uh, God, I, I, I uh, pray that you feel the, the praise that you are worthy of and that you are due. I also lift up Pastor Roy to you as he's going to preach this message today. God, anoint him, fill him with your spirit. Give him the words that we need to hear uh, from the book of Ephesians. And uh, God, we're looking forward to just hearing a word from you today. We love you, we thank you, we worship you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
search the world for a love that could fill my heart. But nothing compares to the wonder of who you are. Holy, all the earth singing, holy, all the angels cry, holy. Hey, good morning, church. Happy Sunday uh, morning to everybody. And uh, thanks for taking time to uh, watch our services and to engage with us this way. And if you're a guest, again, we welcome you in and so thankful for you uh, to be with us today. 
Uh, we're continuing our series of message on uh, overcomer, we're calling it. And today I want to talk to you about being an outsider. And uh, this we're, we're in Ephesians chapter 2, which I believe is one of the great chapters in the Word of God. And every time I read in Ephesians chapter 2, it reminds me of somebody. Uh, and it reminds me of a story. I want to share it with you, but... Um, uh, I'm going to call this guy's name Jay. He's not, that's not really his name, but I'm protecting him in this. But uh, Jay at one time worked uh, as a policeman in a, some of the toughest neighborhoods uh, in uh, one of the larger cities in America. And he uh, was a committed Christian, uh, surrendered to be a missionary, him and his wife, and lived many years in a Muslim country. And uh, later uh, began to travel in some other places. But uh, I began to network with some missionaries and kind of met Jay uh, through a friend of a friend. And he just had the most unique way uh, of witnessing. And again, when I read Ephesians 2 because of a, a verse that's in our text today, I always think of him. And uh, it's right in the wheelhouse of, of the subject that we're talking about today, which is outsiders. And he had, um, as I mentioned, he had this incredible witness that... Uh, he had among Muslim people, he was a bold as a lion uh, in that witness, but uh, he uh, worked for a foundation uh, kind of off and on that put playgrounds in, in Palestinian communities. Uh, it, you know, these, these would be places that, you know, were blocked off from Israel. And so one day he's representing his, uh, his the foundation and he is giving a, a talk about how this Palestinian community could have a playground for their kids and uh, for them to enjoy that. And so he's in a room full of men. If I remember correctly, there's about 20 of them. And Jay tells me, he said, uh, I figured out in about 15 minutes that most of the men in this room were part of the PLO, terrorist organization. He said, which is a very, you know, precarious place to be in, in the, in that moment. And he said, I'm presenting, you know, uh, how to fill the paperwork out and they could have this playground be put in there and it would help the neighborhood be good. And he said, one of the men, he said, got a little bit angry. He said, not at me, he just, he just was angry. And he was looking out the window and he said, uh, we feel like caged animals. And he, and he pointed to the wall. There's a wall there that divides, of course, Palestinian communities from, from the Israeli uh, borders. And let me just, before I go any further, let me just say I'm pro-Israel. There's a reason for that wall. They have to have that wall for security. And uh, I, this this is not the issue I'm talking about. I just want to point out that's that's where I'm at with it. But the man said, we feel like caged animals. We hate that wall. We hate all that it stands for. All the different things were being said that way. And uh, Jay says to the room, he says, uh, well, I could tell you about a man that can take down that wall. And if any of y'all are interested in that, uh, you can set up an appointment with me. I'm staying at such and such hotel and you can come by and we'll talk. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And I said, if we were just talking. We were on a mission trip while he was telling me this story. We were in a Muslim country while he was telling this story. But he says to me, he said, Roy, all, all of them came by at different times individually. They, every one of them set up and asked me, what were you talking about? How do how we get rid of that wall? And he says to them, I, I, I want to get right into our text today. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, he would just quote this verse to them, which is found in verse 14, and he would quote it in part, for Christ, which is the Messiah, has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. Now, Jay didn't tell them he was quoting that from the Bible. He just, he just quoted about the Messiah who could tear down that wall and, and make one, Jews and Gentiles, and tear down that wall of hostility. And every one of them would say the same thing. Jay said they'd say, well, what, what does that mean? And I'm sure as most of us as even Christian people read through this portion of Ephesians 2, we go, well, what does that mean as well? But this is where I want to say that uh, Jay had this very unique way of witnessing uh, to these people. He would say to them, well, why don't we pray together and let's just ask God to reveal to us what that means. And a, a, a devout Muslim person will readily pray. I mean, they a, a devout person uh, of Muslim faith prays five times a day. So 
uh, he said, we would just get out on our knees. And he said that they get on their knees, get on their face. And, uh, and Jay would say, let's just pray. And I'm going to pray that God would just reveal what all that means and who he is and all those things uh, to them. Now, what I'm about to say to you next, you're just going to have to take it on my word. Um, as I mentioned before, listen, I have uh, I was burdened about these people groups, uh, people that grew up and lived in Islamic countries. And uh, most of these countries do not have an open witness. You can't get a Bible. There's not churches. Uh, you know, it's restricted. And I'm thinking, how do we reach these people and what happens here? And again, you just got to take what I'm saying on my word. I haven't heard this one time. I've heard it hundreds and hundreds of times from missionaries and people who grew up Muslim and that came to faith in Christ or those that were seeking. All of them pretty well will say the same thing. When I was young, uh, I, in my dreams, Isa, which is Arabic for Jesus, Isa would come to me. And it, 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 listen, there'd be as young people, I, again, I've heard this hundreds of times. If I'd heard, or, or only heard it once, I would be a little skeptical, but hundreds of times I've heard this. They'll say, Isa would come to me in my dreams and uh, speak to my heart. And I would go, when I wake up, I'd go tell my mom and dad or one of, and they would always say, you must never speak of this. <laughs> I mean, it was, I have heard that same story across uh, all the uh, Muslim world places that I've been it just repeated over and over again. So here Jay is praying with these guys. Let's pray and ask God to reveal to us what this means. He he might even tell, he told some of them it's, it's in the holy book. This verse uh, didn't say which one, anything else. It's just, it's in the holy book. So they're praying and Jay said most of them, most of them in this particular incidence, he said they'd begin to sob. Maybe they'd be 30 minutes into their prayer, an hour. And by the way, silent prayer, they're just quiet. They're just quiet. Just God revealed to me what this is. But he said many of them would begin to sob. And he said after a little bit, they would get up and they would remember the dream from their youth. They would remember that they'd say something about Esau or Jesus has come to me. And, and Jay would ask them, well, what, what did he say? And, you know, he, Jesus is a personal Savior and he dealt with each one of them in different ways and I would love to tell you all the stories that I could remember, but the one that stood out to me was a guy that got up and said that Isa said to me, he came to me and he was in a white gown and he was he was clean and he was pure and I saw myself as dirty. <laughs> think of that, think of that idea. I saw myself as dirty. And Jay said, Well, what did he say to you? He said, You must be born again. Now here's a man who doesn't have a copy of the Bible, who doesn't know John 3:16, who's never heard that verse in his entire life. And he's saying to Jay, what does that mean that I must be born again? And Jay says, well, interestingly enough, there was something that happened near this city that we're in right now, 2,000 years ago. It's in my holy book. Can I read it to you? And he opens up to John 3, 16 and shares him the words of Jesus to Nicodemus, how Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And several of those guys, those guys who were part of the PLO, uh, came to faith in that in that time period that Jay is there talking with them. But my friends, I, I want you to know this. The hope of all of us is in what Jesus has done by tearing down that same wall that we're talking about, that wall of hostility, according to verse 14, that is between Jews and the rest of us. When you see the word Gentile, that's the rest of us. A Gentile is just not a Jew. So it, Jesus tore down that wall of hostility and how did he do it? By shedding his own blood for us all. Hear the word all, of all, the whole world. So remember, the whole book of Ephesians in our study is laid out very simply. It's laid out in two divisions with three reference points. And that is simply this. The first three chapters are the theological uh, aspects or doctrinal aspects that Paul is dealing with. The last three chapters of the book of Ephesians is the practical ways that we walk out our faith and then the three reference points are simply this. We must learn in the first half of the book how to rest, how to sit in, in heavenly places. We rest in what Christ has already done for us. So we, we sit down and we receive what He has done and we receive that information and let it shape our heart. And then what do we do? We walk out our faith. That's why the, the rest of the book or the rest of the last three chapters are that practical aspect. What does... 
what I believe look like and how I behave and how I live out my faith. So it's the walking. We sit first, then we walk, and then we stand. That's the last chapter. How do I stand for God and against the devil in a fallen world? So we learn to stand and we do those things. And that's the progression of all of our of all of our faith in Christ. We must first sit, we then walk it out, and then we learn to stand in that fallen world. Now, uh, in Paul's writing and all of his epistles, he begins with all of them, he is addressing a problem. So let's look at the problem that was going on at Ephesus uh, that caused Paul to write to them. So it's so his his epistle here, his letter to the church at Ephesus is in response to a problem. And the problem that was happening in Ephesus is this. Gnostics had entered, they were false teachers, they were called Gnostics, that had come in and they would say things like this. Well, we believe that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. Well, that's good to that point. They believed the gospel. But then they would say, but you know, you still have to do this, that, or the other thing in order to go to heaven. So in other words, they're adding human merit. They're adding your works. They're adding some ritualistic thing to that teaching. And it was causing great confusion in a church that was doing an incredible work up to that point. Uh, so uh, then you mix in with that. You have, uh, this is a, a basically a Gentile church, but there was also Jewish believers that had come in and they had a little of that Gnostic philosophy and, and it showed up in their culture and they'd say, Yes, we believe that Jesus died and was buried and rose again uh, outside Jerusalem, but uh, we believe that you also need to have uh, circumcision and keep part of the law. And they were holding on to their tradition uh, and their covenant uh, relationship, and they were bringing that in to, to a place it didn't belong. And Paul is saying, you're not right with God because of something that happened in your flesh. You're right with God because of something that's happened in your heart. It's when your heart gets changed and when you believe, that's when you are saved. So we must sit down and learn this. So uh, as we are in chapter two right now, remember we're still in the doctrinal section of the book. So Paul is still teaching and helping them learn this, learn to sit. Before you walk out your faith, learn, learn to first sit and, and understand what you have in Christ Jesus. Now last week, Pastor Zach covered the first 10 verses in this chapter. And one of the key passages in the entire book is verses 8 through 10. And it really becomes an anchor for our faith. So it merits me backing up and catching those verses again because it's an anchor even as we move forward. So uh, here are those verses. God saved you by His grace when you believed. You got saved by what? By grace. When? When you believed. You can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Your salvation is outside of you. It is something God did and He offered to you as a gift. Salvation is not a reward for good things that we've done. Think of that. You didn't get saved because of what you're doing like the Gnostics were teaching. That's why He worded it this way. So none of us can boast about it. No one's going to go to heaven and brag about how they got there. We're all going to say the same thing in heaven. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Uh, he died for me, salvation was totally in Him, and I put my faith in it. Uh, so verse 10, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. In other words, He's put us in Christ and put Christ in us so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Your good work is going to come through Christ doing that work through you and in you, and it's that's, that's His work. Uh, listen, there's nothing good in us except what He's done. So this becomes an anchor point for, for, our, for our soul. Salvation, again, is understanding uh, you're sitting, you're resting. It's just like if we took a chair and we sat down in it. Most of us sat down in a chair by faith. Uh, most of us don't even look, see if it's got four legs. We just, by faith, believe that's a chair. We go, we sit, and what do we do? We begin to relax our shoulders and our midsection and our legs. And listen, when you really get comfortable in a chair, you get in a totally relaxed state and that is the position that that's what salvation begins to look like. We sit down by faith and we rest in Him that He has done everything. Yes, there is work to do because we are saved, but there is no work you can do to be saved. You just have to sit down and receive it and to, and to uh, receive that into your life. Now, if there's a problem, there's got to be a solution. And I'm tapping into part of that. Uh, part of Zach's message is was... Uh, 
he, he talked about uh, remembering. Let me rephrase this part of it and say, don't forget. Now, Paul had a style of writing that he'd make a statement and then he would give, uh, he would back up the statement and that's what we're doing right now. Uh, first half of this chapter, he's making some statements and then we'll come to a transition now. He's gonna back up the statement. So it's just one thing layering up on another. The solution in part is don't forget. Uh, verse 11, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. And that is the title of my message today, outsiders. A lot of translations start out verse 11 with the word therefore. Uh, one of the great uh, ways to study the Bible is anytime you see the word therefore, you must ask yourself why it is, what is, is it therefore? What's it there for? Well, again, Paul's style is to make a statement and then to back it up. So we have these key verses that have been given that, that Pastor Zach gave you last week. And now the last part of the chapter, he, he's going to back it up. He's going to restate it. He's going to re-illustrate it. And that is my assignment today. So don't forget, your salvation is in Christ. It happened totally outside of you. He did it all. And then he revealed himself to you. Maybe a friend came to you and witnessed to you. Maybe someone invited you to church and you heard the gospel when the pastor got up uh, and, and spoke or someone uh, just invited you to, uh, uh, to a gospel event somewhere and you anyway, you heard the message. But somewhere along the way, the Spirit of God had to reveal to you that you were lost. If you've never been lost, my friend, you, or you've never seen yourself lost, you've not yet been found. Uh, the, the way that you know that you're saved is you have to remember that you were lost. You were, in the Word, you were an outsider. So as an outsider, but think of this, but Jesus loved you and what did he do? He tore down that wall of hostility that was between you and him. He tore down that wall. When you put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that wall came down and, and when you believed in his death and his burial and his resurrection, he made you an insider. He took you from being an outsider to being an insider. So again, Paul is writing mainly uh, to a Gentile church of believers and he's saying, don't forget that you all once were outsiders. Now, someone once said, uh, said it this way, uh, talking about uh, being lost like this. He says, you know what? They were drunk on the fruit of the vine, running naked through the vines and worshiping the false god of the vines. And that's pretty well a commentary on how a lot of people go through life today. So the, we've talked about the problem and the solution. Let's look at the condition that they were in. Again, think of the word, they were outsiders. Uh, their condition, th these Gentile believers that got saved, same way we got saved, you know what, think about that. Uh, they were once outsiders, what does that mean? Well, look at verses 12 and 13 here. All this equals, an outsider is equal to lost. So just like us, just like them, we were apart from Christ, our sin did that. We were excluded from citizenship. That, in other words, God had made a covenant with Israel, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, but he, the, mainly a Gentile church. We're, we're <laughs> Gentiles, uh, so we're, we were excluded from this covenant or from citizenship. We did not know the promises of God. We lived in a world without God. We live without hope. We were far away from God. That's, that's pretty well what an outsider is. But notice verse 13. But now, but now what? Things are different. Things are different now. We have been united with Jesus. That happened when we believe. We put our faith in Him. We have been brought near to Jesus, so near to Jesus that He's inside of us and we're in Him. I don't know how much more near that you could be. Notice verse 14. He has brought peace to us because He is our peace. Listen, most people want to have peace by getting all their circumstances lined up and having the environment around them just right. Listen, you'll never have peace in this world if you're gonna always make it about the circumstances being lined up correctly into your preference in life, peace is found in the person of Jesus Christ. So how did he do all that? Well, notice he went to the cross in his own body. He paid the price for our sin and he broke down that wall so we who were once on the outside could now be a person on the inside. Uh, just like that Palestinian person was talking about, we feel like caged animals. We feel like outsiders. Listen, what he's saying is, I, I want to be an insider. I want to be on the other side. I want to be over there where life is better. And listen, we can look as outsiders. I remember what that's like. I, I thought if I could get on the other side of this wall and be an insider and be 
a part of Christ, well, that has to be a better place. So he made us insiders the moment that we believe. Now, the symbolism here is unmistakably, uh, unmistaken rather, when you put the Bible in its setting. Everyone in this part of the world, uh, because they lived around Jewish people, in, in Jewish settlements, and listen, they all knew about Israel, they all knew about Jerusalem, and they all knew about the temple, and they knew how the temple was, in part, was set up. And so it's unmistaken here that um, what they were referencing, even the Jews who uh, were dispersed in other parts of the Roman world, they had very little to do with what they would term as outsiders. They kept to themselves, they, they tried to say ceremonial clean, and it made them despised by so many of the other uh, people in the world, of course, by that. But if you think about it, they, they prayed toward Jerusalem, uh, they looked the center of their faith and their world. Everything was about uh, Jerusalem uh, and about the temple. So if you think of it, Gentiles could go into the court, the outer court of the temple, but they could not go any further. The outer court of the temple was a place that the Gentiles could go. And in a sense, it was set up like a place that uh, uh, they could be evangelized. They could hear about uh, the Jewish faith, and they could convert uh, there, but they could they could only be in that outer court. Women could go in the outer court. Gentiles could go in the outer court. When Jesus drove out the money changers, all those things were happening there in the outer court. But you could not, as a Gentile, you couldn't go any further into an inner court. You had to be a Jewish man uh, to go from that point, and then the rest of the temple, you had to be a Jewish priest to even go uh, into that area. And in fact, there were signs all over uh, the temple warning Gentile people, do not go beyond this point. You didn't want to get loose in there as a Gentile person and forget where you were and wander into the wrong corridor because the penalty for doing that was actually a death sentence uh, and could be legally carried out uh, for that happening. And I mean, that, that, that was, uh, uh, that, that's, man, that's harsh. But you see, that was their condition is represented in all that as our condition. We were outsiders. We, we could only go to a certain point, but there was a wall, and we couldn't go beyond that wall. Now, uh, that's their condition. I want you to see now the revelation. God's great plan is that revelation. We've talked about that a few times already in this series. The mystery of the ages is being revealed here. That's the revelation. The revelation of this is in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that wall of hostility is being torn down. There was always hostility between the Jews and the Gentiles, but now those two groups of people, which is all the people of the world, because there's Jews and there's the rest of the world, everybody now can be one. There has always been hostility between mankind and God because of our sin ever since Adam's fall, but now the whole world can be united in as we put our faith in him and we can be as one and that is the will of God for that to happen. So this, this really is a remarkable thing to me uh, as I've thought about it, thought about how to illustrate this even a little bit better. I feel like I'm a person that's, that's pretty well traveled. I've been to a, a lot of different places, uh, multiple countries. Heck, I've even been to the Canfield Fair. That makes you well traveled, right? Uh, truthfully, uh, people are remarkably the same in most parts of the world. You know what, what everybody pretty well wants? We want to have opportunities. We want to have a better future. We want our children to, to grow up and have safety and security and uh, a better future maybe even than that we had. I mean, we, we universally share a lot of those things. Um, but culturally, that looks vastly different. Uh, I see it one way. Somebody else in another part of the country sees it another way. Uh, here's the other things. We're going to eat different food. Uh, we're going to um, uh, call different things fun. We're going to have different standards of what we think is something dirty or what we think is something clean. Culturally, we're going to be different. Our viewpoints, how we think, are going to be different. You know, someone in the East, their uh, Eastern mindset deals in paradoxes and opposites and so forth. Uh, Western mindset is pretty well, we like our opinions black and white, and we don't like to, to blend a lot of things together. Uh, we're very pragmatic. So there's different ways of thinking uh, that happens in our opinions and our beliefs. But, you know, here is the my observation 
of people and people groups lumped into just a, a few statements, if you will. Uh, I've been with people that I truly had not one single thing in one earthly single thing in common with uh, at all. I didn't want to eat the food. I didn't want to drink the water. I couldn't understand why they thought the way they thought. I couldn't understand why they would want to do the things that they were doing. Language was a barrier. Customs were uh, weird to me. I felt out of place in every way. And by the way, when I say felt out of place, I felt like an outsider in every environment except one. And here's where the, everything got blended in. When we would be able to sit down and I found Christian people, no matter what culture, no matter what language, no matter what the conditions around me, and we begin to share our stories of faith and we all realized, both me and the people I was with, that we all came to faith the same way. I was an outsider. The Spirit of God revealed to me the gospel. I put my faith in Jesus, His death, burial, and resurrection, and I became an insider. And all of a sudden, we had that in common. And you know what would happen oftentimes, and I've been to so many of these kind of meetings, the tears begin to flow and spontaneous worship begins to happen because I realize all the other things are passing away and they really do not even matter, but all of us have been united in Christ because that wall of hostility has been torn down in so many places and done away with, and we realize it just matters that we've, we've put faith in the one who gave himself for us. Now, watch this, verse 15 and 16, the understanding of this. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from two groups. In other words, think again, to, uh, listen, You've got Jews and you got the rest of the world. That's the two groups. He says, I've made one people out of that when they believe. The church is the body of Christ. Listen, that's the, that's the one body. Together as one body, verse 16, Christ reconciled both groups of, to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. I know the text is mainly referring to Jews who were near God but, but because of the covenant of between God and Abraham, and the Gentiles, with the rest of us who are afar off from God, verse 17 speaks of that. These two, Jews and Gentiles, are being made one. But watch now, the principle is found in verse 18. Now all of us, all of us, the whole world, all of us, Jews and Gentiles, come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So the message is a simple one, and that is this, the gospel is for the whole world. So here we see the whole trinity of God at work uh, in for the world's salvation. God planned it before he made the world. Uh, he chose to love us before he framed the world. Remember back in chapter one and verse four, he talks about that. The spirit of God revealed that plan to us. So we got God's plan, the spirit revealing and Jesus carrying it out. And remember, if you're still trying to work out your salvation, you're never gonna come to it. If you're still trying to work your way into heaven, rather, you're not going to be able to, to come to it. You have to rest that he has already done it all. And the spirit reveals to you that you're an outsider. And when you, when you see that and you realize he's done everything for you and you put your faith in that, that's when you move from an outsider to an insider. You just have to surrender and set down uh, in that in order to be saved. Now, listen, there, that's the revelation. Now, watch now the new citizens. I love this part in verse 19. Let me just paraphrase what verse 19 is talking about. So now you're no longer outsiders looking in. You're citizens. You're citizens. You're insiders. Here's a part of the book that, uh, part of this chapter that Paul is adding another wrinkle. He gives you another way of seeing your salvation. And I love this. Uh, we know that we are born again into the family of God. Numerous passages teach that. Paul has told us also that we have, um, we've we been adopted. Uh, that's been a part of chapter one and the language that we see carried out. Because if you're born again as a baby, you remember, I don't know how to activate my rights in the family. But if I'm adopted as a, as a full-grown son or daughter of God, then I have, I have adult rights to my spiritual inheritance. So uh, even though you may be a new believer, you have all the same rights that an old saint of God would have. You can activate that because that's how you've been adopted. But now there's a promise here that is being added to this, this new wrinkle, if you will. But now understand that you're a citizen. 
You're a citizen of the kingdom of God. When you become an insider, and when, by you believing you go from outsider to insider, you become a new citizen. We're not second-class citizens or third-class citizens. We are citizens in good standing in the kingdom because of what Jesus has done for us. Uh, the Roman cities like Ephesus, uh, all those cities had a, a, a role of which all the citizens were listed. And you had certain rights as a citizen that you did not have as a tourist or someone just passing through. You had, you had these certain rights, certain things that you could have. So too many Christians today act like tourists instead of, instead of citizens. Tourists, look, verse 19, if you'll notice, tourists, I'm going to give this a definition here, they're strangers and foreigners. Uh, you, you know what that's like. You can always tell when the tourists are, are in town. They look different, act different, ask different questions, so forth. My parents ran a tourist village for many, many years. My mom still has it. And I always thought it interesting. My dad, his livelihood depended upon tourists, but he really didn't like them that much. <laughs> it's kind of funny because he called them Turons. And that's translated a Turon is a moron tourist. And tourists would come in. And my, and my dad, I mean, he got along with everybody, but uh, here, here's what he come to understand. Tourists come in, they ask dumb questions, they do dumb things, they mess up toilets, they... Uh, litter the property. They let their dogs do all kinds of stuff uh, out, and he just—I mean, it just bothered him by all that all that they would do. And you know, if you if you think about it, as Christian people, we're pretty good about this. A lot of us we're good to buy the T-shirts and see the sites and take in a few Christian services. Then we like to make some messes that other people have to come in and clean up. And we're not so much concerned often enough about being a good citizen. And which is translated out this way, we're citizens and our name is on the roll of, of the, as we used to sing, the, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be, air, be there. Listen, the roll that is written down in heaven has my name on it, meaning I don't need to be a tourist in this world. I need to be an ambassador. I have come to represent the place that I really have my citizenship is heaven. And I need to represent well uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that has sent me uh, into this world to help outsiders become insiders and desire to have what I would have. So we have new citizens. Notice here we have uh, also uh, the new temple. So together we're a new temple. We are a new house. Uh, we are one person, even the body of Christ. We're not to be a bunch of individual uh, little men of mankind. We are to be one man, we are to be one house. This one temple is how God sees us and we are built on a certain foundation. Anytime you build anything, it's got to be on a solid foundation. So that's why the reference here is about it's on the apostles and the prophets. Well, the prophets came first and they foretold of this great mystery. They themselves did not even fully understand it. They just spoke of what God told them to speak of in the Old Testament I think of the prophet Isaiah. Listen to this verse in Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It is a precious cornerstone. Underline that word. That is safe to build on. Whoever believes need never be shaken. So your faith can be as solid as the cornerstone that you have been building on. It's the rock that you've been building on. So then you have the prophets foretelling and even uh, uh, the psalmist spoke of that cornerstone, that foundation. Psalm 118 in verse 22, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. It's speaking of Jesus. Jesus came into his own, his own received him not. He was rejected by his own people and crucified outside Jerusalem. But his death and his burial and his resurrection, that became the cornerstone of which all of our faith is built. So the apostles speak of it. Paul is referencing it here in our in our text in Ephesians 2. Uh, Peter, and I love it because Peter's name means the little rock. He, he becomes part of a, a, a keystone here really uh, in the building of, of the faith of Christ and uh, of Christian uh, Christianity. So it's really cool to see him talking about it. And he spends a lot of time uh, in his epistle uh, that bears his name speaking of these things. Now listen, if you're part of a life group, I'm saving uh, some of this for you so we don't have time to put that in, in the message, but I'm going to give it to you for you guys to discuss. But understanding that 
Our faith is built on Jesus Christ. He is the cornerstone. He is everything. Now let's just close out the message here. If you'll go to the bottom two verses in our text here, verse 21 and 22, we are carefully joined together in Him. That speaks of purpose. We are carefully joined together. We're not haphazardly building this new temple of Christianity uh, in, in our life. This speaks of purpose. We're carefully put together, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through Him, you Gentiles, you who are outsiders, are also being made part, insiders, of this dwelling where God lives by His Spirit. So we're no longer outsiders looking in. However, you should always be an insider who is looking out. We are looking out for those that we can invite in to be an insider and put their faith in Christ. You remember what it was like to be an outsider. Remember that list, without hope, without God, lost, did not know the promises of God, not a, didn't know anything about the, the citizenship, didn't know anything about the spirits and dwelling, the peace that we would have in Jesus. That's what life was as an outsider. Um, listen, living that way, but verse 17 and 18 says again, he brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were afar off from him. You were the outsiders and peace to the Jews who were near. Same gospel, same Jesus, same uh, death, burial, resurrection story saves both Jews and Gentiles. We all get saved the same way. Verse 18, now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Church, uh, as insiders, let's go out and help some outsiders become insiders. And listen, if you're watching this today and you're an outsider, and you're that person that is without hope and you feel lost and you would love to be an insider, well, let me invite you right now to just sit down in Christ. Quit all the wrangling and working and all the different things and the worrying that you're trying to do and just know God loves you. He has sent Jesus to die in your place. He died for the sins of the world, but He died for your sins. He knows you and He loves you in spite of Him knowing you. And He's inviting you to come put your faith in Him. So just surrender to that and ask Him to be your Savior and I promise you that He will. And if you would like to do that right now as an outsider, let me invite you to be an insider. I wanna pray a phrase by phrase prayer. I wanna invite you to pray along with me and ask Jesus to be your Savior, to confess your sins and I'll pray it, you pray it right behind me. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that you love me and I confess that I'm a sinner, and I know that you know that. And the very best that I know how, I'm putting my faith in you. I'm resting in you that you have died for me, and you were buried, and you rose again. And I'm asking you, Lord, tear down that wall that is between me and you, and receive me as I receive you as Savior. I believe that you've done that. I ask that in Jesus' name, and I ask it by faith. Amen and amen. Listen, if you've just prayed that beautiful prayer of salvation, would you text new relationship to the number that's on the screen? Because we want to help you get started in it and uh, get in the right direction and just help your faith to grow. Uh, we're not looking to put a hook in you or to do anything, but just help you. And so please type new relationship or text new relationship to the number that's on the screen. Also, if you uh, need a new Bible or do not have a Bible, if you will text the word that's on the screen to the number that's on the screen, we'd love to send you a copy of God's word free of charge, no strings attached. We just want to be a blessing to you. Again, thank you for watching the service today. I hope it was a help to you and a blessing to you. God love you. Have a great week. What a great message from Pastor Roy today. Such an encouragement and a challenge uh, in all of our lives. Let me remind you, if you prayed with Pastor Roy, in the invitation, text new relationship to the number that's on the screen. That's new relationship to the number that's on the screen. We'd love to call you and just uh, follow up with you about the best decision you could ever make. Also, let me encourage you, if you would like a copy of God's word, you can text new Bible to the number that's on the screen. That's new Bible to the number that's on the screen. If you're somebody that uh, just prayed with Pastor Roy, this is a great time to start reading in God's word. And so, uh, especially text new relationship and also text a uh, new Bible if you just gave your life to Jesus Christ. Let me also encourage you, the best place to start reading the Bible is the book of John or the book of Mark. 
So if you get a copy of God's word or you're just starting a relationship with God, start there. Start in the book of John, um, start in the book of Mark and just let the word of God speak into your heart and speak into your soul. Also, let me encourage you, uh, like we've been saying, this is a perfect time to get connected into a life group. As we are studying this book of Ephesians, um, we're diving deeper in our life group ministry and we're able to have conversations about what we're hearing on Sunday uh, in the message. And so let me encourage you, text LG to the number that's on the screen. That's LG to the number that's on the screen. And uh, I would love to personally help you get connected into a life group this week so you can talk out what you're learning um, on Sunday. Well, it was such a pleasure to uh, worship with you this weekend, uh, today, and we're so thankful that you engaged with us here at Grace Fellowship Church. We're looking forward to seeing you in person, uh, hopefully on June 21st. Uh, but until then, we're continually praying for you. We love you and let us know if we can be a help or a blessing to you in any way possible.